Today we're going to talk about how to graph quadratic functions in vertex form and in standard form using transformations of course. So the vertex form of a quadratic function looks like this. It's y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. And the vertex is h comma k. In standard form, the equation looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. To find the x-coordinate of the vertex, you can use this equation. It's negative b divided by 2a. So let's begin. Let's work on a few examples. Now let's say if we have the function y is equal to x minus 1 squared plus 3. How can we graph this particular function. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the vertex. That's where we got to start. To find a vertex, it's going to be 1 and 3. So for the number inside the parentheses, all you need to do is change the sign. If you see a negative 1, it's going to be positive 1. Keep in mind the vertex is h comma k. And the standard form of the equation looks like this. Notice that you have negative h inside. So you got to change the number that you see here. You have to flip the sign. Here we have positive k, so we don't need to change that number. But over here we have negative h and h, so we do need to flip it. So since we see a negative one on the inside, we're going to change it and make a positive one. For this number, you don't need to change it if it's on the right side. If it's on the left side, then you do need to reverse it. So the vertex is positive one, positive three. So whenever you see this x minus one on the inside of a parentheses, what it really means is that you have a horizontal shift right one unit. So the graph is going to shift one unit to the right and up three. So the first point is at one three. Now there's a technique that you can use to find the other points without using a table. The parent function for this equation is y is equal to x squared. So if you plug in one, what is the value of y? 1 squared is 1. If you plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. If you plug in 3, 3 squared is 9. Now you might be wondering, why am I doing that for? It turns out that as you shift one unit to the right, the graph is going to go up one unit. So the next point is going to be at 2 comma 4. And as you travel one unit to the left, it's going to be 0, 4. So let's extend the graph upward. Since 2 squared is 4, as you travel 2 units to the right from the vertex, you need to go up 4 units to the next point. So it's going to be at 3, comma, 7. So it should be somewhere over here. And as you travel 2 units to the left, you need to go up 4 units. So that point is going to be at negative 1, comma 7. So now we can graph it. So it's going to look something like this. So that's how you can graph a quadratic function. Now, if we were to make a table, notice that we will get the same values. What I would do is, if you're going to make a table, center the table around the vertex. You want to choose two points to the left of the x-coordinate of the vertex and two points to the right. So if we were to substitute x with 2, what is the y value? 2 minus 1 squared plus 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So we have 3, we have the point 2 comma 4, which is this point. Now, because the graph is symmetrical, 
around the vertex, the zero will also have the same y value. And that's this point here. That's 0, 4. Now, what's going to be the value of y if we replace x with 3? 3 minus 1 squared plus 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And 4 plus 3 is 7. So we have the point 3, 7 and negative 1, 7. Because these two points are equally distant from the vertex, they're going to have the same y value. And those points represent this one. This is uh, 3, 7. And this point here is negative 1, 7. Now, what is the equation for the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex. The equation is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So it's x is equal to 1. Now, what is the domain and the range for this function? The domain for any quadratic function is negative infinity to infinity. And the domain is associated with the x values. The range is associated with the y values. Now, what is the lowest y value of this function? Notice that the lowest y value is the y coordinate of the vertex if it's pointing upward, and that's 3. The highest y value is positive infinity because it keeps going up, as indicated by the arrows. So the range is from 3 to infinity, and it includes 3 because we do have a point here, a closed circle. Now let's try another example. This equation is also in vertex form, but you can rewrite it like this. If you want to draw a rough sketch, you can see that since we have an x plus 2 on the inside of the parentheses, it's going to shift left 2. If you set the inside equal to 0, x will equal negative 2. So it's going to shift 2 units to the left, and it's plus 4, so it's going to go up 4 units. So it's somewhere over here, and because of the negative sign that we see here, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So instead of facing the upward direction, it's going to open downward. So that's how you can draw a rough sketch using transformations. But let's draw a more accurate graph. Let's make a table of values. Now the vertex, we could see that it's going to be negative 2, change the positive sign into a negative sign, and we have a plus 4 on the outside. So it's negative 2, positive 4. Now the vertex is going to be the center point of our table. And we need to choose two points to the left of the x-coordinate. So that's going to be negative 3 and negative 4. And two points to the right of negative 2. That's a negative 1 and 0. So let's plug in negative 1. 4 minus negative 1 plus 2 squared. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 and negative 3 will have the same y value because they're equally distant from the vertex. Now, let's plug in 0. 4 minus 0 plus 2 squared. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So therefore, these are the x-intercepts, negative 4 and 0. So now, at this point, all we need to do is simply graph the function. So we have the point negative 2, negative 4, I mean negative 2, 4, which is over here. And 
if we travel one unit to the right, down one, we should be at negative one, three. And if we go one unit to the left, down one, this is going to take us to negative three, three. Now from the vertex, if we travel two units to the right, I mean to the left, and down four, that's going to take us to the point negative four comma zero. And if we travel two units to the right from the vertex down four, this will take us to the origin. And so the graph looks like this. What are the domain and range for this function and also what's the equation of the axis of symmetry? The AOS, the axis of symmetry, is the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's going to be x is equal to negative 2. The domain for any quadratic function will always be negative infinity to infinity. And for the range, we can see that the highest y value is 4, since the function is facing in a downward direction. And the lowest y value is negative infinity. So viewing it from bottom to top, it's going to be negative infinity to 4, including 4. Now, does this function have a maximum value or a minimum value? Because the parabola is facing the downward direction, it has a maximum value. The coordinates of the maximum value is negative 2, 4. So the maximum is located at x equals negative 2, and it has a value of 4. Let's try this example. y is equal to 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 8. Go ahead and graph this function. So what are the coordinates of the vertex? And also, what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? And what is the domain and range? So the vertex is going to be negative 1, don't forget to change the plus 1 into a negative 1, and minus 8. That's going to stay the same. So that's the vertex. So let's plot that point. So negative 1, negative 8 is somewhere over here. Now notice that the parent function is not simply x squared, but there's a 2 in front. Since a is 2, it's 2x squared. So if you plug in a 1 for x, y is going to be 2. If you plug in 2, it's going to be 8. In the last two examples, as we move one unit to the right of the vertex, the y value increased by 1. This time, as we move one unit away from the vertex, the y value is going to increase by 2 because we've got to multiply the effect by 2. If we move two units away from the x coordinate of the vertex, the y value will not increase by 4, it's going to increase by 8 because of the 2. So that's what you have to watch out for in this particular problem. So as we travel one unit to the right from the vertex, we need to go up two units, so that's going to take us to the y-intercept of 0, negative 6. And as we travel one to the left, we need to go up two, so that's going to take us to uh, negative 2, negative 6. Now, as we travel two units to the right from the vertex, we need to go up eight units. So that's going to take us all the way to the x-axis, which is 1, comma 0. So that's the x-intercept. And as we travel two units to the left, we should be at negative 3, 0, because we need to go up eight units. And so now we can make the graph, which looks something like this. and I missed the point. So here it is. Now, what is the domain and range? So as we mentioned before, the domain is all row numbers. X could be anything for this function. Now, what about the range? The lowest Y value is negative 8, and the highest is infinity. So the range is from negative 8 to infinity, including negative 8. And the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So its x is equal to negative 1.
Let's try an equation in standard form. So y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5. So what's the first thing that you would do in this particular problem? So let's find the x coordinate of the vertex. a is 1, b is negative 6, c is 5. Keep in mind, this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The x-coordinate of the vertex can be found using this equation, negative b over 2a. So negative, negative 6, divided by 2 times 1. a is 1. So 2 negatives will change into a positive. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. To find a y-coordinate, we need to plug in 3 into the equation. So 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. 3 squared is 3 times 3, that's 9. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 5. 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. So therefore, the coordinates of the vertex is 3, negative 4. Now, what are the coordinates of the y-intercept? How can we find a y-intercept? To find a y-intercept, replace x with 0 and solve for y. So 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5. So y equals 5. So the y-intercept is 0, 5. Now, how can we find the x-intercept? To find the x-intercept, Replace 0 with y. I mean, replace y with 0. And then factor. How can we factor this particular trinomial? So what two numbers multiply to 5 but add to negative 6? Negative 1 times negative 5 multiplies to positive 5, but negative 1 plus negative 5 adds to negative 6. So to factor it, it's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 5. Now at this point, we need to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So for this one, we can add 1 to both sides. And here we can add 5. So x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. So we have the points 1, 0 and 5, 0. By the way, notice that the vertex is the midpoint between the two x-intercepts. If you average 1 and 5, 1 plus 5 divided by 2, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 over 2 is 3. So if you have the x-intercepts, you can find the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's simply the midpoint or the average of the, these two x values. So let's organize the data that we have into a table. So the center point is the vertex, which is 3, negative 4. And we have the point 0, 5. Notice that 0 is 3 units away from the vertex. It's on the left side of the vertex. So if we travel 3 units to the right of the vertex, this will take us to 6. These two points should have the same y value because they're equidistant from the vertex. So we have the point 6, 5. Now we also have the point 1, 0, and 5, 0. Notice that each of those two points are 2 units away from the vertex. The 1 is 2 units away from 3, 5 is 2 units away from 3, and they share the same y value. Now let's find our other two points, 2 and 4. It's easier to plug in 2 into the equation since 2 is a smaller number. We don't need this anymore. So 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 5. 2 squared is 4, 6 times 2 is 12. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5 is the same as 5 minus 8, and that's negative 3. 
So we have the points negative 3 for those two points. So now let's graph the equation. So let's start with the vertex, which is 3 units to the left and down 4 units. So it's at 3, negative 4. So since we have 1x squared, 1 squared is 1. If we travel 1 unit to the right, we need to go up 1. And that's going to take us to 4, negative 3, which we do have that point. Now if we travel 1 unit to the left, we need to go up 1. And so that's going to take us to 2, negative 3, which we have that point as well. Now, starting from the vertex, let's travel 2 units to the right. And 2 squared is 4, so we need to go up 4 units. So that's going to take us to 5, comma 0. Here is 5, 0. And if we travel 2 units to the left, up 4, from the vertex, that's going to take us to this point, which is 1, 0. Now, if we travel 3 units to the right, 3 squared is 9. So we need to go up 9 units. So that's going to be 6, 5, which is over here somewhere. And if we travel 3 to the left and up 9 units, that's going to take us to 0, 5, which is this point. So we have 0, 5, and 6, 5. And now we can graph the equation. So as you can see, there's many ways in which you can find the points for a quadratic function. So you got to simply pick the method that you feel most comfortable with. The axis of symmetry, as always, is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So its x is equal to 3. The domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. Now what about the range of this function? The lowest y value is negative 4, is the y-coordinate of the vertex, and the highest is infinity. Therefore, the range includes negative 4, and goes up to infinity. Now, does this function have a maximum value or a minimum value? Since it has the low point, it has a minimum value, which is the coordinate of the vertex. So the minimum value of this function is located at x equals 3, and it has a value of the y coordinate of the vertex. The value of this minimum point is negative 4. Let's try this equation y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. So go ahead and graph the equation. Find the vertex, the x and y intercepts, the axis of symmetry, the domain and range, everything. So let's find the x coordinate of the vertex. It's negative b over 2a. So b is negative 2, a is 1, so the x coordinate of the vertex is minus 1. So now let's find the y coordinate of the vertex. Let's replace x with negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2, and then minus 8. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 8, that's negative 9. So now we have the coordinates of the vertex. Let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts. Let's plug in 0 for y, and let's factor. What two numbers multiply to negative 8, but add to positive 2? So 1 and negative 8 doesn't work. 2 and negative 4 is close, but negative 2 and 4 does work. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, but negative 2 plus 4, that's positive 2. 
So it's a factor. It's going to be x minus 2 and x plus 4. Therefore, x is equal to positive 2 and x is equal to negative 4. So those are the x-intercepts. So as an ordered pair, we can write it as 2, 0 and negative 4, 0. So now let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be this number. Because when you plug in 0 into the equation, 0 squared and 2 times 0 is simply 0. So y is going to equal negative 8. So the y-intercept is 0 and negative 8. Let's see if we can make a table with the points that we now have. So let's put the vertex first. To the right of negative 1, we have 0, negative 8. That's the y-intercept. To the left, must also be negative 8. Negative 2 and 0 are equally distant from each other. Now we also have the point 2, 0 and negative 4, 0. If you average 2 and negative 4, if you add them and divide by 2, you should get the x coordinate of the vertex. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and if you divide that by 2, you get negative 1. Now the only points that we're missing is 1 and negative 3. But at this point, we have enough information where we can graph the equation. The vertex is at negative 1, negative 9 which is somewhere over here. And we have another point at negative 2, negative 8, and at 0, negative 8. Our next point is at negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. So the graph is going to look like this. And that's it. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1, the x-coordinate of the vertex. The domain is all real numbers. And for the range, the lowest y-value is negative 9, and the highest is infinity. So the range is from negative 9 to infinity. And so now you know how to graph equations, particularly quadratic equations, in standard form and in vertex form. So thanks for watching this video and have a great day.